Are these all identical? Yeah, these, these are all steel plates. Uh huh. They got some, I'll put these over here so we don't get that up. I'll just take a look at the fuel. I'll get some of these four wrists. This is for depth, you know. Uh huh. Did That's the bigger ones go down deeper? They go deep, yeah, they pull a little harder. An easy system People, because uh, because they have more surface area is that why they go down they, deeper? They got a bigger lift on them and they're heavier. Yeah. They're heavier. That's all it is. The weight takes them down and they stay down there because of the design. Uh huh. And Jason was saying that they uh, they stay at pretty much the same depth. Yeah, you can really. No matter what speed you go. Yeah, you go seven miles an hour and that thing's blowing them out. It's really, it's, uh, when he built these things, he really, he really did something good. He made them the last, I'll tell you. and they're indestructible. It even looks like they have eyes on them, doesn't it? Yeah, they're well, that's, you know, that design is for the fishermen, you know. Is it? Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all for the fishermen, you know. <laughs> that's just to give the, the fishermen a feeling. Oh, yeah, the fisherman feels a little better. Because they, they think that it, the fish will go after uh, something that looks like a fish. Well, yeah. Or yeah, it looks like an animal anyway. That's the fisherman, you know. Uh -huh. they, they try to give the fisherman a, something that he can uh, identify with. Yeah, now it's interesting that you're you're laying out the the, the lures. Now you call them lures, I assume? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I've never seen that done. I've well what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be able to pick them up at random here, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And that'll be easier for us to uh, to uh, to change. It's the different depths that well, you know that we're, we're going to need to do here. Uh -huh. It warms the motor up at the same time. <laughs> the little ones on it, we're going to check the depths of uh, uh, two to four feet. Uh -huh. Okay. And, uh, the little ones, the ones up there. they go down about two to four feet. And, yeah, these these will go down two to four feet, right, right. on the length of the line. Chase will give you a hand there with how to work that reel and how to yeah, work the line. Which, uh, you have a depth finder there? Yeah. How do you work the out? Well, really, if the boat sometimes might be content for the water, but the words are too deep. Right. So you gotta really be aware of where the boat is. You're moving at a pretty fast speed. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm doing about uh, four miles an hour. Uh -huh. It's not unusual to be going five or six miles an hour in the hot summertime on a waterfall. Fish are moving active, faster then? They're more active. Uh -huh. I'm just varying the speed and trying to tip the bottom. We'll see. We probably can start casting. We haven't even hit eight fish in the shallows. Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be a couple more weeks before that happens. That's the bottom. This thing drops from two feet right here. You're going to hit it again a little bit. Cross them too, like a cliff here, see it? Oh, yeah. That's two feet way up on the top of the uh -huh. It's a good spot for a big fish in the shallow, see? There won't be a lot of fish there because it's too shallow and too steep. But see, there's a fish made on the stairs on the land to fish that way. Oh, I really knew that. Had enough. So if there's <laughs> any fish in the shallows, we'd have one. This one here is going to go four to six feet, okay? Now what I do, here's the easiest way to snap and unsnap these, okay? If you put your thumb right there, with it, you see the way I got it right there? Yeah. You have the snap turn that way, hook it right in there, and do that. You never piece of it. Okay, it'll be just the reverse of what you do, okay? And when you try and do it that way, you have problems, you see what I mean? Okay, so when you take this one now, when you take this one, watch in the hooks. Just put it so the ring is up and then hook it right in there. Just push out the hooks in there. You can get at it without sticking them hooks in your hand. I've seen guys mangle those snaps and then tell Buck the snap's no good. Uh, you know, and holy cow, the, the guys open them and close them with the pliers. <laughs> okay, now we're going to start out at four feet. And we'll probably make a couple passes with this size. A couple more passes, I should say. Okay, 
Okay, Chad, here we go. Now you're on the outside, so you're going to want that color right at the rear. He runs a shorter line, so he's not plowing the bottom. You know, because I don't run it perfect every time. You know? yeah. There's a fish here. Oh, just come on, Chase. Is this right? Little fish, like a white bass. I really shook him off. What happened? But you're bouncing off it down there. It's a good thing half the time you don't see what's down there. Yeah. It's scary to death. There we go. Three. Hook a tree, you're gonna. Oh, yeah, we, we hooked a few of those. But it gets cut up a little bit with this stuff. See this down here? This is what you're bouncing on. Uh -huh. That keeps going under the water. Bouncing along the top of it, plowing right through it. So they don't have those big rocks just on the edge. No, they go down. That's what keeps them shoreline from washing away. She's a pretty good fisherman, though. She's uh, nine years old. Once these kids do a lot of this, it's like having another guy in the boat. You know what I mean, Dan? Yeah. They get real good at it. You'd be surprised. Yeah. She's even a little handicapped. She's only got a thumb on her left hand. Oh, yeah? So her hand, real handles, are on the opposite side of you, see? Okay. So I'm on the inside. I want that. You're on the outside. You're on the outside. I'm on the outside? Yeah. Do you just take normal line and mark it with the colors? No, this line comes this way. Oh, really? You might have missed the color. Did you get it? Yeah. You can start it. Several passes to make sure I cover it good. Right. So if there's a fish there, I might have gone by him the first time and he wasn't real active. Yeah. If I go by him the second time, I'm going to get it. You're not likely to hit him every time you go by him, right? No, no. Speed might not be just right or, you know. Okay. Hang on that you got to get the thumb oh, right there. Oh, it'll get for a while. Right? There's no fish in here going to break that well. Huh? But there's some rocks that will cut it and stuff. You know? Yeah. But when it breaks, it frays. Chase had some yesterday. Checked it just by his hand, he was able to snap it. Oh. The rocks just shaked it down. Yeah, yeah. It's bigger. Put them off that spool, you know, until you yeah. put the clicker yeah. up. That's the, that's the secret to this thing. A little bit bigger, see? Is that another two feet? Well, this will go six to eight feet, depending yeah. on how much line we let out. See? We, hit, we use the other one to, to about five feet. Oh, okay. If I want to go to six feet, I'm not going to let out 40 yards of line for the little one, but we can run 25 yards of line for the bigger one. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it just makes it easier, you know what I mean? That's the big thing about this, keep it as easy as you can. And if you have four little fish, you don't have quite that, a That's it. Yeah, see, when, when you let it go, what you should do is, is keep your thumb on the spool and use the left hand, and that way you never have a problem. Right. It really helps to have the uh, color on there. Well, what really makes that so important is if you much. ran 30 yards of line and caught a fish with 30 yards of line out in a certain size lure, you want to be able to run that same depth with that same lure again. Uh -huh. So you just simply let out 30 yards of line. And right across the tip, I'm coming out of 27 feet of water, and you're going to see it come up. I'm not going to worry about how shallow it gets. You know what I mean? I'm going to come out of the, the deep water. See how it come up oh, right yeah. there? Yeah. Like a cliff. I mean, if you were walking, it would fall yeah. up. Yeah. Really comes up, huh? We're going to bump across the end of it. 
know it's a little shallow, we're going to come right across it. Yeah, you can see different things. Yeah, yeah. the same place all the time. You can forget to. Yeah. It's not going the same. It's not going to the same place. If I got my kids or someone who or something, you know, I'm not as fishing by myself. Like, that gets old. I got in here. I like these reservoirs because I can go to a different part of the lake. Yeah. Well, the this is a, yeah, this is uh, a hickory. has a lot of different oh, sections. Oh, yeah. I can go up or down. And, I can go over the road here, so I can go to uh, Lake Norman if I want to, and you know, I just get around. The Lake James, or the Lake James, yeah. What about the smallmouth fishing over there? Buck wants to go over there, so he and I will probably go over there one of these days. He hasn't been there for years, so he wants to really? go over there. It's a beautiful lake. I mean, yeah. since it's not as developed. Uh, yeah. We went over there. Uh, we go a little bit deeper. Sure. Yeah, these things maintain their depth pretty good. Yeah, people are really surprised. We're going to go down about 9, 10 feet. Okay. And we're going to make about three passes over this. Thing. All right. Okay. You can let it out. We're going to soak them up at every depth. You know? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to give it a good shot here. We're almost going to be out to the channel break line with this one. Now what happens here when I go up the side, why I'm going to be so far out, is this thing sticks way out to the side here. The structure goes way out toward the deep water on this side. And on the other side, it's a little steeper. This one you can feel pull pretty good. Okay. Now we'll be coming out of 29 feet of water and up on this side. A lot of see, a lot of these guys use these depth finders and the depth finder screws them up because they try to steer hold it right on the oh, yeah, run up on the shore. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna hit it now, Jesse. See it came right up. We're gonna be up on it a little bit, so we might hit it a little bit higher. Curving out a little bit. It drops off so fast. You can always put a marker on I've got markers here too. They can make it a little bit more accurate for you. Tree roots and rocks. I don't even know what's that. Make those straight passes straight across. It's got a taper in there, see? Better break is on that inside. It drops a little bit faster. And, and the, the fish tend to be uh, right where, where, where there's a, where there's there, a depth yeah. change. Yeah. They, they sort of it's run a rough off. change in depth. Uh -huh. And here it's kind of flat. You can see how it rolls off. Kind of 
Yeah. Better on that fire. side yeah. and over on this side. Okay, we'll wheel in. It's much easier to make straight line passes with the big lures than circling around and trying to, you know, uh -huh. this way I can hit it just right. The biggest thing is to keep your eyes open. Oh, was that a tree? Way out there in the jam. Oh. Bounced right off it. Did you see that, Chase? <laughs> I wonder when they put this dam in. It was oh, a long time ago. They got a history on it. It's really? one, of the, one of the maps they picked up. Uh -huh. It's a long time ago. Yeah. This is all the power uh, yeah. control system. Of course, some of the land has been maintained as uh, land if it's just releasing. Especially in Lake James, I think, in uh, Lake Norman, some of the land is yeah. kept uh, within the industry. Well, all the women who want Lake Hickory and Fisher Reservoir, they come from Michigan or Minnesota, you know? Uh, He's looking at this thing, and he has no trouble finding deep water. It's not a deep hole now. There's a great big bunch of deep water out here. You can't map it with this thing because if you wander around looking at this thing, you'll never know where you're at. Yeah. You can find all kinds of deep water here. But you got to look with your eyes and use your eyes and look at that point with the rocks and say, there's not going to be a structure situation uh -huh. underneath there. Uh -huh. Then you go over there and you turn the depth line behind. That's where the common mistake is. Yeah. Right? The guys spend all their time along these steep shores. The steep shores are just going to have a drop off deep. Oh, yeah. You get right, right up. The front end of the boat, John, if you go down to Bull Shoals or Table Rock, the front end of the boat is hitting the shore, the uh -huh. rocky mountain, you yeah, know. Yeah. The back end of the boat says 80 feet where the depth <laughs> is. It's really <laughs> John. <laughs> you know, at first, when you first show people how to do this, you tell the guy, you know, to shake the weed off. You know, he's, it's not his tackle, and he doesn't know quite what to do. Yeah. He doesn't realize when this thing can, can pull yank hard. it here right. and throw right. it back and yank it uh -huh. again. Uh -huh. That's what it's for, you know? Yeah, because uh, with a lighter weight line, you're just going to snap it. Yeah. We can reel in there. See a snag? Yeah. Well, the tree is on the drop off. Yeah. That's where they're going to be. You know. I'm going to hit this one right on the end. We should hit it too. We can both hit it. This is where we were anchored casting yesterday, Chase. Oh, yeah. See the cactus? Yeah. No, we certainly don't. <laughs> yeah, if you get a little loose line in there, it kind of screws up. Well, I just kind of leave enough so I can pick it up without having to reach for it. Okay, using the yellow one. Okay. That's about it's disappeared. A about a foot. About a foot watercolor? Yep. See, John, when so you it see. It depends on how far you can put the lure yeah. in. Yeah, in yeah this one here, John, you might be able to see further. Put it on the other side. That's all right. Okay. Let's let Jay see it. Shine down here and see. Oh, where are you going to look at it? Right here. Yeah. Just put it straight down. When does it disappear? Oh, I'd say a couple of feet. Foot and a half, yeah. to two feet. I bet you when we get over there, it disappears within a foot of the surface. Uh, yeah, it's just about two feet. Yeah. Or that's not 18 bad. 18 inches. That's not bad. What you don't want is that crystal clear water. Oh, is that right? The fish are too damn deep. So the, it's hard to catch them. They, they're more likely to swim in an area where they're not seen. The water is, when the water is dark, summer. they'll come up shallow enough to reach them. Uh -huh. And it doesn't matter how many fish are in the lake. You know what I mean? If it's clear, you get some sunshine, it's a tough situation. Uh -huh. So, you know, Lake, lake James tends to be uh, yeah, a, a What clearer. you got to do then is go toward the headwaters of the lake where you got more runoff. Uh -huh. And it gets a little bit 
Gladiators. Isn't as important. A low light color. condition is the is the is the key. Uh -huh. and, uh, so if you have uh, an overcast day, then it should be better. The clear, the clear uh, water is less important. Right. All, all it says, uh, the rule of thumb here is that uh, it doesn't say they're going to be there. It says there's a tendency that they may they may be there. If, He doesn't make casting rods yet, but he does make uh -huh. No solid glass, they're almost indestructible. Husky doesn't become too wily anymore, you know. They're, they're sitting down there and stuff. I was catching 150 of them a year. Really? A chain of lakes by Chicago. Uh -huh. They stocked them full of it, you know. Oh, wow. I was catching $150 a year. Well, my boat was, you know. Yeah. People yeah. who were in the boat. Okay, you know. The Wiley Muskie. Yeah, he's pretty bright on that. Predictable. If it hit the end of the bar, well, after we stop bouncing over here, after we hit it, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Muskie's very susceptible to fast speed lures, drone. Very right, susceptible. Five, six, seven miles an hour, you know, in the summertime. And uh, you're fishing a good bass spot, like for instance, this one. Okay. And I'll uh, show you what we would do. Sometimes the muskie would take the lure walking too, and it, especially in the colder water, then, you know, take him walking. And I'll show you what they were sucking. Uh, Usually you about, troll faster for a muskie? Oh yeah, well we troll pretty fast for the bass too. But it'd be like this, we'd be walking the bottom. You see where the drop off is? Yeah. We'd be walking the bottom like this. No bass there, no walleye there, the muskie didn't take yet. You might have been laying just off the end of it. So, do you feel you work them off yet? Take it yeah. off, right? As soon as you work them off, we just go like this. Boy, wham! <laughs> It's just like it walks off the top and it's right in front of his nose and it takes off and they can't handle it. Yeah, they go for it. That's it. You know. Okay, let's reel in. The 14 of them. And these musky guys couldn't pull, you know, they're casting suix and all them great big look. But they weren't, they can't reel fast enough. Oh. You know, and the fish were there. But we were able to, to get the right speed. You know, roll them out, see? <laughs> they were casting, you were trolling. Yeah, we were getting about five and a half to six miles an hour. Uh -huh. And these guys, you know, they cast out and then they... Yeah, just long. They must get a attention to him. He's got plenty to eat when he's hungry. You don't have to chase him. Uh -huh. Just open his mouth and then chain of legs. We're going to start out with that. that uh, yeah, we'll start out with the smallest lure. We're going to go back where we were before. Okay, we'll put the little lure on. On in this bay over here. So we're gonna check this as shallow as we can. Go ahead, John. Now, Jason and I were catching most of our fish around here, or well, all of them here, in this area. Oh, sure. Sure, that bar there is a productive bar. That's where Jason and I were catching them. So that's the one right around here. Well, you and people will lose so much time. No, that's the sad part. Well, you get a nice place to fish, then they wonder why nobody wants them there fishing. Then I try to come down there with my daughter and probably get chased out. Out for the bigger lures.
this. See the edge of that marina building there? Yeah. With the edge of that island? When I put that marina building on that island, I come right down there and hit those two uh -huh. points. You see uh -huh. what I mean? Right. And so the minute we move the boat, watch how the building moves away. Right. You see what I mean? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, we didn't have depth binders when we first started yeah. to do this stuff. Sure. So you needed the. Oh boy. <laughs> you talk off about the battle. You know where it is. Can you imagine in our area full of weeds? Oh boy. I dragged up more weeds than you. Yeah, there's probably not that many weeds in this lake, are there? No. You can't even find the grass, huh? Uh -huh. They told me there's some grass somewhere. Jason and I ain't found it. It's gonna guide me along, but the line site puts me right on. I mean, you can always find some kind of line site, even like on the Lake James. Crotch in the trees or yeah. something on the shore. Some trees you know. just up high yeah, up. there's always something. Get another one over here. See that point of land, John? Put that white house. See right. this point right here? See that white house? Yeah. You put it, or say we're coming toward that boat house right there. Right. That would be a good right. They can always pick up something. Always something. Yeah, when we didn't have depth finders, that was that's critical. what we had to right. do. Boy, you talk about a grizzly bear. And the weeds, we threw a lot of markers too. Uh-huh, did you? Uh -huh. Yes, too. Follow bears in the Nashville. You're gonna get us out away from those hangs, Chase, as you can see. Yeah. If we make our cast in this area right here, like between that barn and that red house over there, we'll be right on it. Get there. I got us out in eight feet of water, Chase. I'm gonna stay out of those trees. To make our cast this way, because all that crap is right in here. So we're right at it now. Seven four, seven one. It's deep out there. The object is to anchor as shallow as you can and still reach the fish. Mm. Never cast toward the shore. Well, you want if to... it's a steep shore, like rocky riprap along a road, mm -hmm. cast parallel to the shore. Step up different sized lures as you cast further away so they go the deeper and yeah. deeper and right. deeper. You right. know, Cast at the shore, you're only fishing this much of the whole area. Well, if I throw down the shore then you pull it bring it back, I'm the... fishing the whole yeah, thing, see? Makes sense. Yeah, and, uh, but you know, these guys with the big boats, the reason they cast toward the shore, they're afraid to get in there. The uh -huh. $25,000 boat, you know what uh -huh. I mean? Okay. So you want to, you want to, you want to be pulling your plug right. back along, right. along the same depth sure. all the way. Sure, and if I want to go deeper, I'll put on a bigger lure, gas uh -huh. parallel. You uh -huh. know? That's one of the biggest problems that people have, you know. Um, what we're going to use here, because we've been trolling pretty fast and we didn't pick one up, we're going to use what we call a jump type board. And uh, uh, this jump, jump type, type board, yeah, it can be a spoon or it can be a jig and worm or uh, you could even use, I knew better than to leave that lure on um, You could use a Johnson spoon with pork right now, but it's the way that we're going to fish it. It's the way we fish it, not what it is. Uh huh. Okay. Jump lure, I mean, it jumps off. We're going to jump it off the bottom. Off the bottom. That's what, exactly what we're going to do. And it could be a jig and worm, it could be a Johnson spoon with a pork grind on it, uh -huh. you know? Jason, why? It's, uh, no, it's graphite. Graphite. Most of them okay. are graphite now. Are they? Yeah, and now, it used to be when the graphite came out, the graphite was more expensive. Uh -huh. Now that they're all graphite, because they could get graphite cheap. Now, if you want a fiberglass rod, now you got to pay an arm and leg really? for it. Oh, yeah. Really? The only ones that make it is Old St. Croix. Uh-huh. They're the ones that are and coming back. the only people that want to buy it are glass. probably uh, just tradition, huh? Yeah. God, we think the graphite is, is lighter weight and stronger. It's lighter and it's stronger, but it does break. So it does break easier than the, the, yeah. than the oh, yeah. fiberglass? Fiberglass is a little more flexible. Uh-huh. 
Now, this thing don't look like much, but believe me, You know, me, this it's attaches to the, in the center of, uh, of uh, yeah, there's rather three than on the, on the nose. We put it in the center to keep it kind of balanced, uh -huh. you know, so when we lift up on it, it... Uh, but when, you, when you're pulling it through the water, does it tend to track? Goes, it goes straight? It doesn't go sideways. No, much. you'll watch what I'm going to do. I let it sink to the bottom, see? Oh, okay. Okay, it sinks like a rock. I take up the slack, jump it off the bottom. The slack, Oh, jump okay, it so you're just, just bringing it up and it's sort of jumping like a frog. Exactly. And it casts like a bullet, you know? And some of the wind that Chase and I had to put up with, this is all you could use. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's some trash down there, you know. But each time you let it sink to the bottom. The trick is to keep it That's moving. That's interesting. I've never um, been exposed to that concept. Mm -hmm. And you say that the concept of, of, of uh, jumping is, is not necessarily unique to spoon uh, plugs. No, this is just using a jump type lure. Now right. we cast spoon plugs too. Uh -huh. Okay, we cast them too. It's a very simple retrieve and the kids can do it. Mm -hmm. Like cranking in the spoon plug is really, you got to really work on it. It's digging in just like what you saw when you were trolling. Yeah. So I can cast a spoon plug and my nine-year-old she can put one of these on and hop it around on the bottom. Yeah. Very easy. Yeah, and, and uh, you don't have to be consistently pulling the Exactly, in. and the cast You can good take form, a break. You know, and like uh, a bullet. I'm not even throwing it. Oh, if yeah. I, it goes if I way. really throw it, I, right. it, you can cast it so far that you can't feel it. But when you cast these, you can feel the wiggle when it comes off the bottom. When uh -huh. I pick it up like that, and when they're there, you'll know it right yeah. away. So Huck Glenn in about your second cast there. Plenty of pressure on him. He might be a pretty good one. You got a net? I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I see. Don't reel him right to the end. Chase, give me that net fish. He's a striker, I think. Yeah, big strike. Look at the size of my guy. Isn't that little white bass at home? Oh. <laughs> Look at that one. Hey. All right. Do you know how to take the hook out, John? Yeah. Or I can do it. Yeah, that looks very little, though. Got it. All right. <laughs> Pretty, isn't it? Yeah. That's a, that's a striped bass? That's a white bass. Yeah. White bass. I don't Pretty think I've ever seen a white bass. Pretty old white bass. They shit on you, too, John. Yeah, that's a little bigger reel, but... Oh, well, I got a green one. <laughs> yeah, you got a little bit of a weed there. You watch where I cast, and then you just cast right to the right of me. Easier said than done. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's a good idea. Because that's when the big fish is going to hit, John. Just when you have a frayed line. When you got a frayed line. <laughs> you lose you it. You bet money on it. No, this one right there. This one? Yeah. So we cast for quite a while. Now we're going to troll? Yeah, we're going to go back to trolling. There's nothing happening. The fish haven't moved around or nothing. So we're going to put these 250s on it. We're going to go wandering around here and see what's going on. Okay. So we're fishing a 250 on the uh, steep shore line. On the steeper shore, yeah. We're going to go back over to the bar on that side in a minute here. And that's the summertime structure over there. Yeah, that's where they are most of the year. This is a steeper shore. The bar is right over there. Across the creek channel. This is a creek channel. So you like these uh, medium spoon plugger rods for most of your work on? For most of it, yeah, especially for the smaller lures. Smaller lures. More field and uh, a little easier to handle. A little easier to handle, but for the bigger lures, you almost have to have the heavier rods if you're going to run them a lot. For the seven and eight hundreds? For the seven and eight hundreds, yeah. Okay. If you're going to run them a lot, you almost have to have 
the break out inside the creek channel rather than out on the end of the bar. Well, there's a break out here, but it doesn't even get near the river channel. But the creek channel is deeper. It's 30-something feet, 40 feet right out here off the bar. And it, you gotta go a long way to hit 40 feet out this way. So your contact point is from the creek channel up to the bar. Right. Fish are coming from the creek channel right here. Okay. Okay. Chase. Nice fish. Got him on the bar hump. Bar hump, yeah. Bar hump. Bar hump. The, fit, the lure I said I haven't caught nothing on. Yeah, is that right? Yellow with the red dots. I'll sell it to you. You can't <laughs> you, you can't say that anymore, can you? <laughs> Okay, no nice more. job. That's about a three and a half pounder. Yeah, about three pounds. Okay, way to go. Yeah, they'll get us releasing. You know. Okay, way to go. Good fish. Now what do we do? Well, I think what we're going to do is make another trolling pass because I had a hole of something back there, if you remember, and I and I said to you, I don't, you know, I think I rolled something. I wonder if I had a big bass on back there. I came up there. That's that little finger, that little rocky finger. Off the stick. shoreline over here. Yeah. We dropped a marker. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's on this shoreline right here. I think we're going to make another trolling pass so I can get things set up here. Okay. Go get them. So we caught a pretty decent fish. Now we're going to, we're making another trolling pass. Yeah, we're going to make another pass or two. It'll happen to our marker. It's in there farther, I think. Pass or two, and that fish might have come from that, uh, that hump out there. Mm -hmm. Moved up along here. We'll see, that's for sure. Then, if you think so, you'll stop and cast the area? We'll stop and cast, yeah. But I hit something here before, and I thought I hit a log or something. I might have had another big fish on the same spot. So, if we get another fish in this spot, of course, we'll. You got. Something coming with you. Well, I got the thing that I hooked before. Oh, Real okay. Little. Hey, those that lure will catch about anything, won't it? All right. <laughs> okay. So you're well, gonna straightened out here. We're gonna be sideways. Coming back into seven. We know the boat was where the marker is. Yeah. So then we're going to cast out from here because this is about the same level where we caught the fish. Yeah, we don't have much of a projection, just a little short one here. So what we'll have to do is cast out in parallel with all of this stuff and see what's going on. Then bring it out and fan cast around after we yeah, do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now you said always make one pass before you leave, after we cast here. Why was that? to make sure there's nothing around. Just check it one time further, because we did catch a fish here. Right. Okay. The yellow color for bass in particular? In the dark water lakes, yeah. They seem, seem to be able to see it better or something. There's something about, uh, something about uh, being able to see it. Ah. So, uh, standard yellow with polka dots or Winnebago yellow, something like that? Any kind of a yellow, even the solid yellow. We're getting a lot of cloud cover moving in now. It's really getting thick. Yeah, I can see that. This light condition has changed. It's been the best light we've had, I think, since we've been here. It's and we, we caught one fish uh, a little later in the afternoon, but you think now it's changed, gotten even darker. Yeah, you, I think it's going to be good from here on out. You think from they're here until dark. Today. Yeah, the next couple hours will be. So the time of day, like yesterday, the movement was probably two, three in the afternoon, and yeah. it's five o'clock now. It so came during the warmest part of the day. Today, with all this cloud cover tonight, this looks like it. The front's coming through. This is the front side of the front. Yeah. It'll rain tomorrow and uh, cool off a little bit. So this prefrontal condition, we should probably move this evening. I would say. Okay. So it doesn't have to really tie in with the day before necessarily. No, it had nothing to do with it. Different light condition. That's what the light condition we were putting up with, you can see it, it's going that way. Uh-huh. And all this stuff is moving in. Okay. 